Hi everyone and welcome to class. Today we're going to continue to talk about math topics that will appear in the ACT. So over the past few classes we've been talking about different triangles and their properties and so today we're actually going to focus in on one family of triangles, the right triangle, and then talk about the Pythagorean theorem. So I have a couple learning objectives for you all today. The first is I want you to be able to identify the right angle and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And then the second is I want you to know both how and when to use um, the Pythagorean theorem. So first we're gonna talk about some right triangle terminology. The first is the right angle. So every single right triangle is always going to have a 90 degree angle, which is called the right angle. Uh, we've learned in previous classes that some triangles are classified or characterized by their greatest angle. So a right triangle's greatest angle is its right angle. And could anyone tell me how we might know that these three triangles up here have a right angle? Yes, Emily? Because there's a square. Right? Yes, yeah, because there's a square. Yeah, so we can see that in the red circle, every single one of these has a right angle. Um, it's really easy to identify. On the ACT, you can see that it will have a little square where the right angle is. So next is the hypotenuse. So we know that the longest side of a right triangle is its hypotenuse, and it's always gonna be directly across from the right angle. So could anyone come up and volunteer to show me where the right angle and the hypotenuse is of these triangles? Yes, Lindsay? Okay, so this is the right angle, that's our hypotenuse. Uh -huh. Right angle, hypotenuse, right angle, hypotenuse. Perfect. So yeah, we can see that the right angle is right here and then directly across is always the hypotenuse. And next we're gonna cover the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so the Pythagorean theorem is a formula that actually describes the relationship between the three sides of a triangle and more specifically, the three different lengths of a triangle. So we can see A and B represent the legs of a right triangle, and those are the two sides that come out from the right angle. And then C represents the hypotenuse, which is what we just learned about, which is right across from the right angle. And this formula is so useful because if we know any two sides of a right triangle, we can use the formula to then find the missing third length. But we can't use this in just any situation with any triangle. First, the triangle must be a right triangle, and next, we must be given two uh, sides, so two lengths of the triangle to use this formula. So here I have three different triangles. Could anyone tell me which of the three triangles you can use the Pythagorean theorem with? Yes, Hannah? Is it the one on the right? Yeah, so the one on the right, right here, we can use because um, it has both, um, the two sides given, and then it's also a right triangle. So this one right here is a right triangle, but we only have one side, and this one right here is not a right triangle. So now that we know when to use it, let's learn how to use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, I have a triangle right here, it's a right triangle, and I have two given sides. Could anyone tell me what the first step is where we would plug in these numbers? Yes. Uh, so the six and the eight represent the legs of the triangle, so they would represent the A and the B. So it would be six squared plus eight squared equals C squared. Perfect, yes. So we can see it's six squared plus eight squared equals C squared. And can anyone tell me what the next step is? Yes. So you calculate six squared plus eight squared, so you get 36 plus 64 equals C squared. Perfect. And then what is 36 plus 64? Yes. 100. 100, perfect. So now we're down to the last step. Can anyone tell me how we solve for C? Yes. You can take the square root of 100 and you get 10. Yes, perfect. So we end up with 10. So now we have solved our first Pythagorean theorem. Um, so now that brings us to the end of class. So as I said in the beginning, now I hope that you are comfortable identifying the right angle and the hypotenuse of a right triangle and also knowing both how and when to use a Pythag the Pythagorean theorem. And I will see you next class. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.